presents the beat basement where you hear from your livest producers all of them and this is where it all goes down where you hear the funky sounds from the producers that's up and coming to grammy award winning all of them and i'm your host swish and we going in everything going in Well, on this episode, man, must I say any more, man? Hottest producer in Chicago, in the Chi Town. Hottest producer and engineer. Hottest yeah. producer and engineer. Period. Proud. Like. Period. My boy Pacino. What do you do? Shit, bro. Working, you know, we here. Welcome to Chicago. Had to, had to bring the South to the Midwest, you know what I'm saying? We 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 here representing everybody from Chicago, bro. Shout out the West Side, shout out the South Side, shout out Homer Park, shout out Logan Square. We here, baby, we making it. Like, shout out my moms, you know what I'm saying? Like For real. My God, shout out the fam, you know what I'm saying? Real. Shout out my cousins, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Hey, shout out everybody. What's up, mom? You know what I'm saying? What's up, mom? Hey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shout out my mom and everybody else, you know, too. My here, dad, we here, we uh, here, my like... uncles, my brothers. <laughs> what's up, y'all? <laughs> we made it. We made oh, it, mama. Like... Yeah. That's what's up. But you know, appreciate that, man. You already know, man. I yeah. come with that energy yeah, every single that. day. <laughs> I needed that. I needed that. Shit. This is a good time, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy um, to have some of your time, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate man. you coming to the crib. You know what I'm saying? I mean, anytime you come, you, you more than welcome. Now we, the door's wide open for you and your fam. You know, anytime y'all want to come, we'll yeah. be here. Like, yeah. Hey, I'll be here. We'll that's be what's here. up. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where you want to get started? Bro? I mean, I, we can start wherever, bro. I, I personally like to start where I started. Like, I didn't. I didn't come from like a musical family. So that's why I always got to shout out the fam because they know that nobody else in my family does music, bro. <laughs> nobody, my dad, nobody did this shit. Like I'm the, I'm trailblazing for everybody. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm actually the first person in my whole town in Mexico to do this shit. So that's what I feel like. I always got to shout out my people and hey, shit because I, I come with a whole village. I don't just come by yeah, myself. You know what I mean? Like, a lot, hey. I I hold y'all down too, man. Yeah, that's, I appreciate that, my homies, man. Appreciate you know I mean? that, Straight man. We, we we need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that community love. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, for sure, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you for even having me, bro. Yeah, my God. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's the one of the reasons why, like, I I always go back to that is because that's kind of the influence on my sound. You know what I mean? Like, I always like even with me cooking up with Jay. Like, I try to bring as much of my influence as I can. Like he said, you know, you don't really got to struggle when you know who you are as an individual. Yeah. And for me, you can't forget, or you can't know where you are or who you are as a person if you don't know where you're from, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you always gotta shout out the people you came with, you know? Always yeah. gotta shout out the people that kind of developed you as a person, you know? Yeah. And the town that you grew up in and everything, you know what I mean? Like, that's, right. to me, like, I, I think that's it's special that you you come from Atlanta, right? Do you yeah. grew up in Atlanta or? Nah, I grew up in San Diego, California, man. There you go. Yeah, you were just telling us, bro. Yeah. Like, that to yeah. me, like, you bring that vibe, you know what I mean? Like, I could almost get that, like, West Coast type <laughs> of vibe and shit, but you got that South Twang. That's all. That's what's up, bro. Like, I love appreciate that shit. It, like, appreciate it, man. But I, I do this for y'all, though, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, yeah. For real. For real, man. So, yeah, I, I can't even got y'all flavor, man. You know what like, what thank mean? you. Thank you for real, bro. Um, where you going? Yeah. So, let's. Let's talk about that town. Let's talk about the town. For sure, for sure. Um, I I actually was born in uh, Orlando, Florida. I I didn't grow up there. I grew up in Chicago. You know what I mean? Um, but I spent a lot of the time, like from my early childhood to like early teenagehood, in Mexico. Like I actually had to leave over there because I was getting sick a lot here. I have asthma and shit. So like during the winter, shit get crazy. That's why I like to leave in the winter and shit. Like I always be down south or out west because like. I got sick constantly when I was a kid and I still kind of deal with it type shit. So I ended up going to Mexico for a little bit, kind of grew up there as like an early, you know, kid, early childhood type shit. And then they threw me back in the mix in Chicago when I was like a teenager. So when I got back here, when I was like 12, 13, um, that's when I kind of discovered like what hip hop really was. I already knew it. Like, cause when I was a kid, one of the first concerts I actually like accidentally stumbled into was a public enemy concert. Like, we, yeah, my OG took me to, like, a soccer game and shit. We were supposed to go, like, watch a soccer game at a park. 
And I veered off from the soccer game because I was listening to like sounds and like the sounds intrigued me more than anything. The sonics of like how the snare would hit, you know, and like how it was like reverberating throughout the trees and everything. Like I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? So I went from like the soccer game to towards that concert and this was in Washington Park. Like if anybody's from Chicago, bro, y'all know Washington Park. Um, it's not like a good neighborhood out there. Like it's some West Side ass shit. Like all you see is liquor stores and gun shops. Right. But that's where we would have our soccer games. So I veered off from the soccer game to the Public Enemy concert. I didn't know what I was walking into. I was, I think, eight years old. You know, this was right before I had left to Mexico. Like eight years old, and I'm walking into this concert, and like I'm, you know, new to this whole experience. Not only the sonics of everything, but just the vibe of everything. Like you can picture me. Like all I grew up with was like band music mariachi music you know right. say like mexican right. as music right so to go from like hearing like what sounded like almost like a circus to like some other like world type shit like it really like opened my eyes and then i think that that's the moment that i fell in love with hip-hop like that's the moment the first time that i ever saw any live performance was a hip-hop performance and like chuck d just being up there and delivering you know how he he does it very abrasively with his style and everything and just the concepts of everything. When I came back, like I trailed off, and my was like, "Yo, who the fuck is he?" Like, right. you know, what I'm I was the lightest motherfucker in the crowd. My was like, "Yo, like somebody's kids lost or some shit." You know what I mean? So my OG went looking for me. She's like, "What happened?" You know what I mean? Everybody's like, "Yo, you, you obviously lost your kid." And then she asked me, "Like, are you okay?" And I was like, "I'm good." Like, you know what I'm saying? I was right. happy, and she couldn't understand why I was so happy. And I'm trying to explain it to her. You know what I mean? Like, I just witnessed something different. You know, like, and. I think that that moment kind of redefined who I was like as an individual, you know, and ever yeah. since then I took that like intrigue and then I went to Mexico with that intrigue. Like, what was that music? Yeah. And I started like in Mexico, they would have these flea markets yeah. where they have like mixtapes. Right. And this is like, I'm talking like mixtapes, like they would have like a CD full of like 30 different artists, Tupac, Biggie, all sorts of shit mixed together in different Eminem, all sorts of shit. You know what I mean, yeah. but this was like early in the days. So I would go and like to these flea markets and grab some of these CDs and not knowing what I was grabbing, you know, and one of the first CDs that I grabbed was like a Tupac CD. And then that like changed everything. I, I'm pretty sure it was Tupac. Me too. Bro, like, that, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that once, once I heard Pac, I was like, oh shit, like this is different. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, like the, ever since then, like I, I haven't really looked back. Just kind of fell in love with music deeper and deeper. You know what I mean? Like that's dope. That's dope. That's 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 hey. That just blew me. That just blew me away. You <laughs> that's like, a you real life get, story, bro. Right? Right? That's you was even able to get into a public enemy. Right, right. And it was like it, to me, like as a kid, you don't really understand the concepts of things that are being thrown at right. you. So like right. he he was up there talking about rebellion, protesting, you know, anti-establishment type shit, and you're kind of receiving the energy, right. and you're going back like with this whole new like. Yo, what the fuck did I just feel? Like, right. you know what I'm saying? So I had the intrigue and I always carried it forward into like my teenagehood and that just developed more and more. You know what I mean? And it's just ever since then, I've, I'm i so deep into hip hop. Like, I, I swim in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> honestly, like. <laughs> that's what's up. Damn, that's what's up. <laughs> So when did your parents really just like be like, okay, we gotta accept that he? You know what? Is, What's crazy is since I, nobody does it in your right, family. right, right. Nobody really accepted it until I started making money off of it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it didn't become a thing for them until like, for example, like I and I explained this this story to Jay. Like one of the first times that I ever was to collect a check from music, like I sent it to my OG. Like the first check that I ever got from a Spotify, you know, Spotify check, um, I sent my mom $1,200 and she just kind of like was worried, like, yo, where did you get this money from? Because she knew at that time I wasn't making that kind of money. So she was like, how are you just throwing like $1,200 at me out of nowhere? And I'm just like, because that's, that's music money. And to her, it blew her mind because she always, she thought like, okay, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be an engineer, all this other shit, but you're not going to do anything with music at least in a respectable way. So when I shot her that first check, and I was like, yeah, pay your rent, do what you gotta do. Don't even worry about the money, just here's money. She looked at me like, oh, this is serious. Like this is serious for you and it's serious for all of us. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Like once you start developing yourself as like, not only like 
an artist, but just as a person yeah. in the industry, yeah. then you know, like, okay, I'm carrying forward this energy not only or for even myself. in front of your parents. Right, right. Or, yeah, or right, right. Right, right, right. right, 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 right. You already know that when, when when you get in front of your immediate family, that's who you are. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's in it, it went from me just being like an artist type or like a guy that made songs to now I I charge people for what I do. You know, like I I, did, I don't just do this willy nilly or I don't no. just do it for fun. No. Like we're here no. for a business, business. right? Right, serious. right. And we take it very serious. We take this like like it's our life. You know what I'm saying? It's live or die for us in this shit. So that's how you have to approach it. And they they your family's forced to take it serious when you take it that serious. You know what I'm saying? When they look at you like, oh, he's he's in this shit for the, the yeah. long haul, yeah. like till <laughs> he's done yeah. type shit. Okay, we gotta get behind this. And then once you get everybody behind you, then you feel that. Then you're like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like this is what I needed to do. And obviously you you have to have that belief in yourself. You know, I don't think I had the experience that I had as a kid on accident. You know, I think there's a divine force that kind of made things happen the way that they did, and that's why I'm here. You know, I might believe in music more than anything is I'm here to fulfill like a service. Like I'm a mediator for him. You know what I mean? Like I'm not here by myself just doing this. Like I feel like like I always say, you know It wasn't a cool incident. Right, right, right. And ever, ever, ever. You know what who, I mean? Who go who even comes to a concert at the age you were. Right, 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 to right. Experience, experience. Right. To experience everything that, that I did. Yeah. Right. Uh, that energy. Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? So that that's amazing in itself. What age? What age? What age were you when you just when you knew it then? Like, uh, cause I know you didn't know it at the concert. No, no, like, no. Obviously, no, no, no. It's not until I came back and um, I I went to to middle school. Like I was in seventh or eighth grade, and um, and you know, obviously, you start getting into the vibe of things, you start meeting people again, and um, and when you're like a teenager at that point in time, you're trying to make as many friends as you can. So I was really trying to make friends, and um, and one of the things that I saw myself connecting with other people was through music. So, like, one of the reasons why, like, I have, like, even the friends that I have is because of music. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, like, for example, when I was in middle school, I had a friend who was really close friends with a guy that I knew and shit, and, like, he shot himself. And, like, it kind of affected all of us, because we all, like, were in that clique, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't, like, best friends with the guy, but my best friend was best friends with him. So after that, like, I feel like, we kind of like healed ourselves Mentally. with music yeah yeah because we we needed to get out of the tra tragedy and get to the point where we can we can start being kids again and start like you know obviously living life again so one of the one of the ways that we found was music like we would go to the garage and like just play instrumental you know and just kind of start freestyling and that kind of got us out of that whole zone of like thinking like yo this is like life is crazy or life is bad and started like really embracing life and started thinking bro like freestyle have fun da, da, da. and that that love for freestyle and that love for beats is what carried me forward through that like whole experience you know what i mean and i'm sure like e even the people that i grew close with that's how we kind of grew close is through looking at the outside lens and being like yo like music is the one thing that can get us through a lot of shit and it, and it has been I mean, it's music saved my life more than anything, more than religion, more than anything, anything <laughs> in the world, bro. Like, honestly, I can say that very fucking honestly. Like, and I can feel that. I can feel I, that. Honest to God, yeah. bro. Like, it's the one thing that I think even to the day that I die, I can always look of towards. magnitude. Right. It's, it's, of, it's of that that level. Right, right, right. And that's why I have such a respect for it. Yeah. That's why I have such a respect for it is because it, it affected me so deeply and, and it healed me and helped me so much that I feel like people need to have a respect for it. You know what I mean? Just like anything else, you know, you, you build something up or you work around something and you expect people to have that type of respect for that type of, yeah. you know, thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Just as if it was there. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Your baby. You know right, 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 right. You, so, exactly. Yeah. You nailed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, music my baby, I would say. <laughs> music is definitely my baby. Like Right, 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 right. Shit. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> what can I say? Hey, Shit, man. bro. Damn. So was I can tell you was already in the cipher freestyler. Oh yeah, yeah. I know you was freestyling. Yeah, you yeah. got some skills on the freestyle. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean we that. we grew up in like where I'm from in Chicago, we grew up in an era where if you were going to do the music shit, you needed to take it seriously. So mm -hmm. 
And like I said, us finding solace through music kind of yeah. helped us like gain a military mindset for it. You know, when we would go to the garage, it would be six to eight hours of freestyling or right. battling right. for six hours, you know, and like like even my one of my guys, shout out Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? Shout out James Soto. Out you know what I'm saying? Shout out Dangerous Garden, of course. Shout out the studios and shit. Um, they like we grew up in an era where the competitiveness is the reason why we were able to kind of get better. get yeah, get better and like yeah. kind of gear ourselves for better experiences. Yeah. You know, um, once we got to the point where we knew that we can rap, a studio was like, yo, yeah. like this is the place to yeah. be, you know? So we wouldn't treat a studio like, oh, we're gonna go there and hang out. We had still that military mindset, like, oh, we're gonna go to the studio, boom, have 10, 15 verses ready. You know what I'm saying? Have, be, be on deck with your songs, be on yeah. deck with everything, concepts, everything. So we would come with that energy, you know what I mean? And that's why I think like we were able to create like when we were in high school, we were, we made mixtapes, bro. And we were on like, you know, like the circuit as far as like Chicago Sun Times and like people in Chicago knew us for putting out tapes and being consistent with our work. And that's one thing that I think like we kind of faltered at the end because we didn't keep that focus. You know, it's, it's, it's all about, like I said, staying in a thought. And if you can stay in that thought constantly, then everything like freestyling or making beats or everything just kind of becomes second nature. You know what I mean? Like... And I think that's that whole era helped formulate that and kind of cultivate that in me. And I've carried that forward ever since, bro. Like, I always picture myself, if I'm in the studio, I still think of myself like I'm in the garage, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you know, and then I think of, like, even then, like, I'm like, you're not in a garage, but this is it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is more serious than if you were in the garage yeah. type shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's why I think yeah. people lose that focus, bro. I, I think people kind of start losing that that want for it once they get comfortable you know and i've i've never been comfortable i've never even here like i feel like there's always things to develop and always things to grow from you know what i mean like so that's 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 i think driving the energy that i have even today like just to, to push forward and be like fuck it we're gonna get better and better like you know what right. i mean like right. even as an artist i'm always looking to get better even as a rapper like i'm not you know, putting out mixtapes like that, but I'm always looking to my left and to my right, like, who's right. who's doing this right. shit? You who's know what I'm really saying? Who's doing. sharp? Who's better? You know what I mean? And let me be with them type of shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that, and you gotta stay with the you, too, you know? Like... Right on. That's right on. That's right on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. um, know. That's what's up, man. What, uh, what instrument did you, did you play growing up? Uh, I actually, even? yeah, I played a couple of instruments. Um, I picked up the first thing that I ever picked up was a guitar, just because I it was that mariachi band. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the things that was a given. Like yeah. I'll tell you, my uncles used to play guitars at like some parties and shit, yeah, and they never like took it serious. They were just drunks, like yeah. you know, strumming right, and right, playing right, type right, shit. Right, so that's why right. I always say like I'm the first one to actually do music in a serious sense because nobody ever took it seriously or never I've even took like music theory or did like classical training for it. It was like fuck it. We're drunk, play a guitar. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? And I, well, I took, bet you it sound good. I oh yeah I'm saying what yeah. what you six eight coronas in. Yeah. Everything's gonna sound good, bro. You know what I'm saying? Take take four or five shots of patrol right. and take right. coronas, you're gonna be right. decent. Right. Everything's gonna you're sound right. good. You'll be right. clapping and be like, yeah, yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? Like that but that was the vibe and that's that's kinda like even to this day I feel like yeah, it's important to know music theory. It's important to be classically trained. I respect everybody that is, but I also think it's important to like create a vibe. You know, for producers out there, if you really want to get placements, if you really, really want to like get to artists that respect you and like get them to get on your beat, don't focus so much on like your sonics and everything. That's important, but focus on the vibe that you create in the studio with them. You know, I'm sure you, as working with Zaytoven, anytime they come in, he creates a vibe for them. It's not just, I'm going to make a beat for you. No. You feel like you're taking a Zaytoven experience. Yeah. So I, at the end, when you come into my sessions or when you come into my studio, I want you to feel like you got the Pacino 773 experience. You know what I mean? You got the whole Pacino experience yeah. and this is what it was and this is what it was and type shit. I'm honest with my shit to that point. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not here to do anything else but create good ass music. Like, that's all. Like, my dream goal was always to, like, create a piece of composition or music that resonates with the whole world. Like, I don't care if it's trap, uh, pop, classical, rock, whatever the fuck it is. Right. As long as it resonates with you and you, your grandma, 
your grandkids, whoever the fuck it is, can sing it all together and love that shit. Like, that's that's what I'm here for. I'm not here for any other cute shit. Like, I'm not here to, like, you know, do a, like, no, no, nothing. I just want to create something special. And if it's a love song, if it's a trap song, whatever it is, as long as it's a moment for you, that's what I'm here for. That's that, and my purpose is fulfilled then. Then I could die happy. Like, right. at that point, you know what I'm saying? Right. I just want to recreate a moment that I was given through music. That's it. You know what I mean? As long as I fulfill that purpose, then but you know happy, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think everybody is like, yeah. in a sense, as an artist, you can't look for anything else but, like, yo, what does my producer and engineer want out of me? Right. Well, a good song. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Good music. That's it. Right. Right. Right, bro. Damn. You know? Yeah, man. So, 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 what kind of dog are you on, and, and, and do you even want to get into that? Cause, I, mean, I mean, we so shit. deeper than deeper than just the basic. Definitely, definitely. Know, uh, I, I use FL now. I started with Reason, um, and I think one of the main reasons why I started with Reason is because I was trying to emulate the sound that I heard. Like, you know, what I mean, like, kind of growing up, I always heard like a hip hop, organic, like neo soul type sound so when i was trying to create that i heard that reason was like the best thing to do at do that with but after years of using shit bro like you just kind of want to work with a doll that's fast and that's comfortable with you and that kind of fulfills just the purpose of it you know what i mean to me fl was that like i don't gotta argue with fl i don't there's not a a, a tug or back and forth for me as soon as i get on the first it's a second nature type thing and I think you feel that with every doll, like every artist or producer has that, like particular love, hate relationship with certain shit. And like, that's why certain people get attached to Logic or certain people get attached to Ableton because they knew what they were growing up with. You know, FL was always there. Like, even when I had reason, FL was on my computer and it was always like, like the cousin that I didn't want to show up at the party, but it was there, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, all right, cool. What's up? We got to get cool. You know what I mean? And then you find out that's the coolest cousin in the family. Like... You know what I'm saying? So that that was the experience for me. Is like FL has brought out everything that I needed. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't have to sit there and really like argue with the program as far as just the, the intricacies of it. You know what I mean? Like once you get certain basic knowledge of it, then you can kind of work it. You know what I mean? And that's why I like making boom bad beats on it. You know what I mean? Because it's like boom, you put certain shit, boom, boom, throw that shit into the playlist, throw a little bit of arrangement, it's done type shit. You know what I mean? Like that's it. And um yeah, I mean, and then recording wise, like engineering wise, I use Pro Tools. Uh, obviously, that's industry standard. You want to be able to speak the same language that everybody speaks. Like, if I could just speak Spanish to you right now, this interview would not be easy, bro. You know what I'm saying? This would be a whole, You're right. a whole different You're right. vibe. You know what I'm saying? But that's why, like, Pro Tools is that. Pro Tools is I can speak your language now, and that's that's why, like, I don't I don't tell people you got to use a certain thing, but if you want to be, you know cross-platform and be able to take yourself into different studios and different places, you want to be able to speak the language, right? Yeah. Pro Tools is that language. Like, yeah. unfortunately. But, right. Right. Or fortunately, however you want to look at it. You know? <laughs> right. Like, right, right. Is that your favorite type of beat to make, too? The uh, boom baps? Or? Uh, boom baps, I, I love boom baps because that's what I rap on most. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I make, you like... You're from You're right, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Like, I'm, I come from right. bars, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, and you can't really do yeah. too many crazy bars no. on like a trap or beat. too many sound you know i mean it's different from making sounds and actually ch changing your voice you right, right 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 the vocals of your voice right 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 right, right. You know what I'm saying? so i i i i still you know i'm very partial to that but as far as like creating and like kind of getting into the vibe like trap shit is like it for me like mm -hmm. i the drums of trap for some reason just remind me of the days of like like really intricate like jazz or like yeah. rock drummers you know what i'm saying because right. you have a lot of fills you got a lot of sh and that's yeah. one thing that besides like yeah. guitar the one the first instrument that i ever really fell in love with was drums like i was in a band for like four or five years in my mid-20s and that helped me like kind of gain that like knowledge of okay well this is what fills are this is this is what's going to work as far as rhythm or like this is how you keep a two four beat or a four four beat and I've I think I've never really fell out of love with drums. Like anytime I get on a drum set, it's just a different like feeling for me. You know what I mean? And you know what you're meant to do type shit. And I think like the first time I got behind a drum set, I was like, this is comfortable. Like this this is this all feels kind of second nature. And like ever since then, you know, like that's another reason why I like Fruit Loops a lot is the drums, like how you can lay your pattern out is so much 
easier to me than like working with other dogs for some reason. Are you speaking as an engineer? Or no, as a producer. As a producer, like I feel like just being able to arrange patterns on Fruity Loops is so much easier than like Ableton or Logic because th there's a lot, and, and this, maybe I, I don't know enough of those other, you know what I'm saying? That, that's another thing. If you're not comfortable with shit, you might not speak on it. Um, But I feel like because I gained such a comfort with FL, that's why I'm able to do what I'm able to do with the drums. If I, would, if I didn't get comfortable with like the piano roll and just the sequencing and shit, then I don't think I would be able to do like the crazy shit that I can do type shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah, definitely love boom bap, love trap, uh, love a lot of the West, like, cause I grew up like with Twista. I grew up with like do or die, crucial conflict, West Side Chicago music. So when you hear West Side music, you think of Trackster. Trackster was like the first producer that I ever heard to do like triplets in a flow. You know what I mean? That, you know what I mean? Like, you know that that shit's hard, and you're like, yo, where the fuck did it come from? That's West Side shit. That's West Side shit, bro. Artist. Like, before anybody was doing it, we were doing that on the west side of Chicago. And motherfuckers were looking out at us crazy, like, yo, what the fuck y'all doing? Even the down south people, not to knock anybody down south. Don't, don't think I'm saying anything crazy about down south people. But I'm saying, like, as far as, like, the actual trap sound, I would wholeheartedly say that shit came from the west side of Chicago, bro. There's no other place that that it came, that it came from the west side of Chicago. <laughs> you listen to Twista's first fucking album or you even listen to like the second or third one that's where you like finally gain like yo where did 808 mafia gain their influence from where did south side or lex luger where did all this shit come from bro west side shit that's west side shit like i'm god that's west side shit like <laughs> and i i say that wholeheartedly bro because i think of the mixtapes i think of all the shit that that i grew up with and i'm like that sound was around when i was a kid like that's not an unfamiliar sound to us and that's why, like, dude, when it's going crazy now, I'm like, why? Chicago, we better be going crazy, bro. We better be going crazy because this was us for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This was us taking the jazz era, taking some of the influences from down south, everybody that came up and, like, mixing it all in this gumbo. That's what Chicago is, bro. We're a, a mixture of the west side and the south side and, like, this, like, grit. And that's why I love it here. That's why I can't see any other city of me calling any other city home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I will always wholeheartedly say I'm from Chicago, bro. Like, even if I move out of here, you know what I mean? Even if I move to Vegas or to Atlanta, I'm going to always say I'm from Chicago because that's where I grew up. That's the gumbo that made me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm proud of that shit. Wholeheartedly proud of that shit. Shout out to West Side. Like, shout out Logan Square. Like, yeah, <laughs> man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like man, I'd be talking a lot. Like oh, I'd be saying you a lot. You good? You good? Do you feel like you have that that sound? That oh yeah, sound? definitely, definitely. Like I feel like when you listen to our beats, especially when you listen to me and Jay's beats, like you can hear the the where we come together as people. Like you can hear Jay's influences as far as classically trained, as far as him being from here, and then you hear that tw that twist of the West Side for me, because I, all I can do is think like patterns you know what i'm saying and all i could do is think in certain like like intricacies of patterns and i can't ever think of like drums in like another way like i've tried i've tried even when i try to make my drums simple they're always there's always something in them you know what i'm saying like always something that i'm throwing a flare or some kind of crazy shit in there and it's like it's not supposed to work but it works like that's how i think of it like if it's not supposed to work and it works then let it let it ride you know what i'm saying like that's the new wave you know what i mean like and that's how you find new pockets and new sounds is to try to do things that are outside of the comfort zone and yeah. just within do yourself. you think that's a part of your own music theory or it's something you learned? Did you go to school for that? No, I mean, I went to school for music theory. I, I took basic music theory in college and shit because I went to Columbia. So I actually went to, to John Marshall Law School before I went to Columbia. I was trying to be a lawyer and I was in law school for about six to eight months and then I realized I was going to blow my fucking brain out. Like I felt like this this was something I wanted to do and I don't want to do it type shit. Yeah. So then I got back into music and then when I got to Columbia, I started doing like more sound design type shit. And that's when I really fell in love with it. And then I think after that, it was like, fuck it. Like that's that's what I'm gonna do type shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like you, you carry forward in your experiences and that makes it easier to kind of like fall into who you are. You know what I mean? Like. Do you feel like it helps you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think um, just being able to sit down and 
learn music is an experience, you know, and if you can't learn like how to learn music, you know, because there is a certain way of how, of how to learn music. Right. You know, it's not just learning like you're learning a language or anything. There's a certain almost like way to take it in. And if you don't take it in, you get discouraged right away. Right. And I say that wholeheartedly because I got discouraged. Thinking that you knew music. Right, right, right. Music. Right, right, right. Like you think, oh, because I'm going into this with certain basic music theory and a want for it, that I should be successful or things should come out like this. Sometimes they don't work out that way. Sometimes it takes years for you to get to where you fucking need to. You know what I mean? And like, once you finally start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, that's when you got to push it the hardest. You know, it's not when you start seeing it that you're like, all right, cool, I can fall back now. Like, no, push through that shit. Because that's, that's the hardest thing is like, you learn like from those experiences. Like for me, going to college and like going for something that I didn't want to do kind of made me realize okay this is what i want to do now so i'm going to be focused on this when i get into it i'm not going to approach it half-heartedly or i kind of want to do right. this but don't know right. hell no if you're doing music fuck it do it all the fucking right. way you know what i mean and that's that's how i i started taking it even the last couple of years that i really took it like life and death like now it is my living that's exactly why it's panned out the way that it has and that's why like i think success is right around the corner because it's it's how much sacrifice you're willing to put into it, and if you put twenty three hours of sac twenty three hours of your day into sacrifice of something, there's no way you're not gonna get something out of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, there's no fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. They say that. They say that. You put a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand. Yeah, a hundred thousand hours into something, and you get like the yeah. craft of it. You yeah. you know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then once you know it, the hard part is being successful at it. Yeah. That's the hard part. It's not so much, oh, I got there. Like, okay, now you're there. What are you going to do with it? Right. And that's that's where people falter. And I think that's where people start losing energy. It's like, okay, I got here. Now what do I do with this shit? What you, what'd you do with it? How'd you, how'd you keep Push it? myself. Like now... How'd you get past that? That, um, that uh, all right, I'm done with it. I'm just going to play I would say play with it. the way that I got past it was actually working on the craft enough to where I wasn't looking to my left or to my right or any, to anybody else for approval of it. Or like, you know, like once you get satisfied with your own self, then you should be okay. Like there shouldn't be a reason why you're looking towards another artist or another producer and being like, is my sound valid? Like, you know you're valid. You can feel that moment where you're like, oh shit, that's not like the shitty beat I made last week. That's not the same, like, right. feel it. Right, right, right. You feel it. So, so once that instant happened for me, um, I think after that, I was like, there's no looking back. You know, you made a good beat. How do you make a bad one after this? You know what I mean? Like, and you're going to make bad beats. Not to say people won't make bad beats ever. But what I'm saying is, like, once you make your first good one, you should know that's that's who you are. You know what I mean? Like, people shouldn't have to look anywhere else but that moment where it's like, oh, this is it. This is it. I finally got to that point mentally in my mind where I needed to. What made you keep going to get to that point though? Um, just for me, not looking like not giving you up. Because once, you once you have nothing to do, or just... no, not even that. It's you. You sacrifice so much of your life for something that you can't give up at that point. You know, like once you've you've gone through three fourths of the race, why are you gonna stop right. three fourths of the way there? And most people, that's where they stop. When when they get to that bend around, it's like, oh, okay. The finish line's right there. I can slow down or stop. No, that's where you got to go the hardest. That's where you, like, when, when, when I was having bills pile up, when I was having my family tell me I'm crazy and I shouldn't be doing this shit, when I wasn't, like, I was basically homeless at one point trying to do this shit. That's when I realized, like, okay, you've hit rock bottom and you're still trying to do this. Like, that's a, that's, there's nothing, there's, you don't argue with yourself, and then you see, like, okay, this is, this is the moment where you know you're not going to let this go. You're not going to let this go. You've, everything else is falling apart, and you're still holding on to this one thing. Wow. To others, it looks crazy. It looks crazy. It looks crazy, but it always does, until they see the fruits of it. Until they see the fruits of your labor, and until they see your success, that's when it doesn't look crazy to them. And it always works out that way. It always works out that way. Michael Jordan looked crazy to people turning down deals and doing this this left and the right. You know what I mean? Taking a shitty deal in the beginning of his contract. And look at what he became. You got to play the sacrifice game in order to be able to be successful. That's the hard part. Is are you willing to sacrifice it? And really willing to sacrifice it all?
not just oh i kind of did this and it was it was okay and like no bro you gave it all like yeah. you were taking out loans you were doing everything to make this shit work it, so right so now like i know i'm at the point where i got you know access to studios i have access to high profile clients that i've never thought i would have access to people with million plus followers that i've worked with that respect me and my craft that i don't need to look to the left or right anymore you know what i mean i know what i'm doing like now i know what i'm doing like well it's almost one o'clock bro yes sir you wanna, what you want to do you want to cook up uh, we can no. we can do that or we can I mean we could do a cook up together like I wanted I wanted to cook up sure. with him. Do we got time though? I don't I think he said it's booked till one. Okay. So no, we know. could do it another time. Yeah. All right. Next time I'm back in town. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm definitely gonna interview you again <laughs> and you too, Judge. Mm -hmm. I mean both of y'all, bro. And I don't want to interview both of y'all together. So. Yeah, yeah, we definitely yeah, need to do that. Uh, that needs to happen, bro. All right. Yeah. All right. Y'all you know, wanted to happen this time or next time? Because you got to cook up by yourself right now. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. It's the cook up. Time for the cook up. Pacino, thank you, man. Anything you want to Yes, man. man. We here in Chicago, man. Shout out Fort Knox. Shout out Dangerous Garden. You got to follow us on Instagram. Follow me on every single platform. Pacino773 on everything. Everything. Yeah. I use samples, I don't give a fuck. I use anything that sounds good. <laughs> anything that sounds good. Like, and this shit's hard, bro. Like, <laughs> I was gonna show you this shit. Yeah, this is mine. Yeah, no, like, I, when I was thinking, like, I'm gonna cook up right now, man, there's like, my mind's always working on this shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I'm like, I, I need a moment. Like, Producers, if you're looking for samples, man, should I give them the sauce, bro? Should I give them a little bit of sauce? All right, we'll give y'all a little bit of sauce, right? If y'all want some like obscure ass shit that's not really like like samples that are commonly known, I recommend going into like Italian film OSTs, which are like original soundtracks. You guys were talking about that earlier. Soundtracks are the shit. Like soundtracks to movies and shit. Like this is a horror movie from fucking God knows when. It's like 1970s or some shit. Uh, that in a horror movie? Bro, I'm God, bro, but can you picture it? Like, I'm saying, like... Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, it don't matter where it comes from. Sometimes it just sounds good. It sounds good. You gotta argue with it. Like, All right. Let it be what it is. So we're gonna pull the sample right now. I'm dropping it to Edison, one of my favorite fucking things to do. Just chop by the Edison. A lot of people chop different ways and shit. Yeah. I like to just chop out of Edison, throw the chops into the playlist, and just kind of fuck with different drums. Also, drum breaks are good. I recommend people pull drum breaks. If you know any any good fucking people who got drum breaks, send them my way. Yeah. I'm always looking for shit like that, too. Yeah. I'm just gonna take that first part because it just sounds hot. Like I was just telling Jay about no drum beats. Like y'all ever heard of that? No drum beats? Y'all ever heard of that? You ever heard of that? No drum beats? Hell no. Hell no. Literally, it's just I don't even know if I want to hear that. Nah, it's literally just a sample, bro. Like that that's what uh, blew damn, me, bro. I'm like, oh dude, they don't do nothing with these. They just look like, okay, cool. Like y'all lazy now, just that lazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't do that. I, I add sauce to my shit. I need to. I need to. <laughs> Got to. Got to.
at your mouse pad, right, Jay? Ain't that it? You losing? No, the mouse pad. Oh, um, let's see. Yeah, that. You know it. What it do? Chino with the cook up. Time for the cook up. What it do, Walt? What it do, J-Mo? All right, Jay? It's good. Trying to freak it, ain't you? That's it. Trying to freak it.
Like a hit switch and dip 